Afternoon, this is Colin Clark. I did a breaking defense. We are again in the Raytheon Chalet uh, with their counter UAS behind us. I'm here with Roy Azevedo, who's uh, head of their Space and Airborne Systems Division. And you've been in, I think, about eight months. That's right. So and now that you know where the various uh, offices are and who's in them, uh, what are your priorities? Well, we're spending a lot of energy on several. Uh, first and foremost is evolving the business culture. Meeting our customers' needs will always be a priority for the What's business. evolving the business culture mean? So evolving the business culture is the fact that we are hiring thousands of people. We hired thousands in the last 18 months. We're going to hire thousands more in the next 18 months. Can you give us and numbers? We want people, thousands, over 2,000 last year, over 2,000 in the next uh, 18 months and likely to continue for the next four or five years to continue to do the work that we've won and intend to capture in the future. With that many people coming in, new people coming in, we want to be sure that our employees know they're valued, that they're working in a value-based management system, that their voices are valued, that we encourage them to have an impact on what we do. We expect them to be involved and they are going to influence the way that we do business. Mm. And the most important thing, as far as we're concerned as a leadership team, is the fact that our employees like to come to work. And they like to come to work because we are values-based. They're respected. They're accountable. And for the, combine that with working on some of the coolest technology that you have, pretty good place to come to work. Let, let's talk, what, are there a couple of other top priorities for you? Meeting our customer needs will always be a priority, right. and then expanding our ISR market position is also a priority. For and us. is there a goal like two to five percent over the next two years, something like that? No, we just have a general growth, and we're looking to uh, very much just expand on areas like our special mission aircraft, okay. our multi-int solution for ISR is one of the areas that we are uh, looking to expand in, and especially internationally. Okay, Let, let's go sideways a little and talk about one of my favorite programs, the Next Gen Jammer. I know it's one of your favorite programs. Um, where are we? I understand there's a, uh, there, there's a marker coming up. It, it is one of my favorite programs, you're absolutely right. Uh, we'll be delivering the first two EMD pods by the end of this year. And. What happens when you deliver them? The Navy takes them and they go and do some testing. They do testing in labs and they do testing in the air. So this is the IOT&E? Uh, no, it's pre-IOT&E. It is, okay. Yes. And uh, the last thing we heard, which I think was at Farnborough, was that the program was going pretty well and uh, technically you didn't see any real uh, obstacles still the case or have you encountered enormous obstacles? We're going to meet the requirements that the Navy has. We're quite confident that the user, when it gets these pods in their hands, are going to be happy to see the performance that they're going to get for this solution. Okay. And uh, you mentioned multi -end. Uh We have heard about multi ant for probably 10 years mainly from the intelligence community and they haven't said very much about it aside from it exists. Mazen's always my favorite. I never hear anything about it. Um, so how are you playing in this and what's your goal? It is missionized aircraft where we provide multi-int for the special mission aircraft area means that we have radar, we have electro-optical, we have infrared, signal intelligence, communications intelligence, all on board and having that information being used to complete the mission that you need, as opposed to relying on simply a radar or electro-optical infrared sensor. And it's all fused? Uh, fused is a term that is used very widely. Yes. Um, we certainly, in many cases, some of those sensors are looking at different things at the same time, and it's actually one of the benefits that you have, as opposed to looking at one thing with all those sensors which I think is a good way to swing to artificial intelligence, which along with machine learning will certainly play a role in that. Um, 
AI is one of those things that sort of spreads across the business, right? So how are you managing with the rest of Raytheon to pull in the best of AI and make sure that what you've got actually suits your needs? So artificial intelligence is absolutely a focus area. Every one of the businesses has some amount of work that we're doing, both internally and for customers. We're working with companies outside of Raytheon Company to tap into the talent that's out there. And what we do is what we do pretty much across the board where we have communications in the technology area and are able to look at uh, lessons learned and what are the best from each part to bring it together. Is there like a company-wide IPT or something like that on AI? Uh, we have a center of excellence for artificial intelligence. And I, I would assume that's sort of where you go to get what you need most of the time, yes? It's where all the engineering brains go right. to, to see what's out there, what's being worked on, what's needed, uh, how might we be able to contribute to make what we have even better. So uh, you're uh, working with Lockheed on OPIR, the successor to Sibbers. Uh, it, how is work going on the sensors, and uh, when is our next marker on that program? So the, uh, the program is going well. One of the objectives for the Air Force for Next Gen OPIR is to demonstrate going fast in mm. space. Uh, we are going to do everything we know how to do and are doing everything we know how to do to make sure that we're meeting the objectives of the Air Force and Lockheed on the program. Can you do it within five years, you think? I, I do. If the funding is there, we can do it in five years. Fair enough. Thank you very much for your time. You are most welcome. Colin Clark, Breaking Defense.